let's uh, go ahead and start using the concepts that we've just been learning about. Uh, there are going to be two questions on exam two that are exactly what we're talking about in this video. So make sure you understand it. By the way, make sure you understand it. Uh, starting out at the very first day, I told you that it's really difficult to memorize this stuff. And unless you've got like a wicked great memory, I don't think you should even try to memorize it. I think you should try to understand it, all right? And I understand things through an analogy. That works for me, but you know, you might work in a more sciencey kind of a way. We're gonna talk about abnormalities of the endocrine system. And in general, whenever you're talking about health problems of the entire endocrine system, you're really talking about either there's too much hormone in the system or, or there's too much activation of a hormone's receptor, okay? Or the alternative could be not enough hormone or you've got enough hormone, but it's not activating the receptor, okay? This concept of not enough hormone or not enough activation is really important for understanding sugar diabetes. And that's why I think it's an important concept. But right now we're going to talk about how would a patient's blood test look if they had some kind of an abnormality of this part of their endocrine system, the part um, involving the hypothalamus and the anterior pituitary, okay? We'll get to diabetes in a later video, <clears throat> okay? So how can you decipher the cause, like who's to blame? <clears throat> so uh, let me tell you specifically that you need to uh, understand two different, I'm gonna call them stories. You need to understand that the hypothalamus where is that image? That the hypothalamus, when it wants more uh, cortisol, releases CRH, which causes the anterior pituitary to release ACTH, which causes the adrenal gland to release cortisol. Okay, that's one story. Okay, and the other story you need to know when the hypothalamus releases TSH, when it wants more thyroid hormone, it'll cause the anterior, I'm sorry, TRH, good thing I wrote it down, uh, TRH, oh, <laughs> I'm just making it worse, TRH, okay, that'll cause the anterior pituitary to release TSH, which will cause the thyroid gland to release thyroid hormone, all right? So these are the two stories that you need to know. And we're gonna be thinking of it kind of like we think about mocha, pumpkin lattes at Starbucks, all right? We'll start with that. And that's because this is a negative feedback loop. So if, if, corporate, if corporate does not say sell pumpkin lattes, then the manager should not tell the employee to sell pumpkin lattes and the employee should not sell pumpkin lattes, okay? If the employee started selling pumpkin lattes too early, should we fire the employee? This is, this is actually not a business class, right? But you want to say to yourself, well, wait, I don't know. You know, maybe the manager told him to. All right, should we fire the manager? Oh, I don't know. Maybe corporate did send it out, right? Maybe there was a glitch. So looking at a patient's blood test when they've got cortisol levels that are too high or too low, or whether there is... Um, whether there's thyroid hormone levels that are too high or too low, we can figure out where the problem is by thinking with this analogy. Let's try it. Okay, we have got a case. The thyroid hormone level is too low. 
the THSH level is way too high and the TRH level is too high. Let's take a moment. So thyroid hormone that's made by the thyroid gland, TRH is made by the hypothalamus. So that's made by the anterior pituitary, okay? Remember the RH ones are made by the hypothalamus. Let's start with step one. When in medicine, anything that is hypo is not enough. Anything that's hyper is too much, okay? Does this patient have too much thyroid or too little thyroid? It has levels that are too low. So it is hypothyroid. So we can cross out two of the questions right there. Now, we need to intuit who is to blame. Okay, the thyroid hormone level is too low. That means the employee is refusing to serve pumpkin lattes. Should we fire the employee or is the manager to blame? Oh, well, the manager is sending out TSH. So the manager is telling the employee to make pumpkin lattes. So if he's not, then it's his fault so we have a patient who is hypothyroid due to a problem with the thyroid gland. Very, very, very common. All right, let's do another one, okay? Now we've got a case where the thyroid hormone level is too high, TSH levels are too low, and TRH levels are too low. Okay, well, what is the problem? Too high means hyper. So right away, we can cross out Two of the answers, we got a 50-50 shot, even if we just wing it, right? But let's give it some thought. Now, here is someone who's making not just pumpkin lattes, but lots of pumpkin lattes, all right? Now, should we fire him? Was he told to make pumpkin lattes by his manager? No, he was not. He was not. So now we've got a patient who's hyperthyroid because of their thyroid gland. By the way, why are TSH levels too low? Well, let's look at it here, okay? Normally, this would be my TSH levels. And my TSH levels would be kind of in a normal range. And while they're in a normal range, my thyroid hormone levels are in a normal range. If my thyroid hormone levels go down a little bit, then that would be a sign for my anterior pituitary to make a little bit more TSH. And when it makes a little bit more TSH, my thyroid hormone levels go back up and this will go back down. Now in this patient, they've just started making wacky high levels of thyroid hormone. So the anterior pituitary does not have the power to stop. It doesn't have the power to say, stop. All it can do is to, I'm sorry, all it can do is it can withdraw its command to say go, okay? So as thyroid hormone levels go up because the thyroid gland is the problem, TSH levels will crash and TRH levels will crash for the same reason. Homeostasis, negative feedback loops. Let's try another one, all right? Now we've got thyroid hormone levels that are too low, TSH levels that are too low, and TRH levels that are too high. Well, the thyroid, the employee is supposed to be making pumpkin lattes and he refuses to, he says, no. Should we fire him? Was he told to make pumpkin lattes by his manager? He was not. TSH levels are too low. As a matter of fact, corporate keeps sending that manager tons and tons of commands to start making pumpkin latte and that manager is not reading his emails, all right? So our thyroid hormone levels were too low so we can cross these ones out. And who was to blame? The manager. All right, let's do another one. Thyroid hormone levels are too high. Okay, let's start with that. We can cross out the two hypothyroid answers. Okay. And is it the thyroid gland to blame or the anterior pituitary? Well, the TSH levels are too high. That means the manager is telling the employee to do it. So 
The fault lies with the anterior pituitary. Now, in real life, we don't generally test hypothalamic hormones. That would be like a specialty test. However, in every general practitioner's office, they will be checking, you know, middle-aged women, particularly for thyroid hormone levels that are too high or too low. And we're always looking at thyroid hormone levels in TH, TSH, always. And now you'll know how to interpret them, right? Which endocrine organ makes cortisol? Well, the name's got to answer right there, right there in the name. Cortisol is from the adrenal cortex. Cortisol, cortex. Okay. What else have we got? Which endocrine organ controls your metabolic rate? Easy peasy, right? That's going to be the thyroid gland. Okay. Which endocrine organ makes insulin? We only barely touched on it, but the endocrine organ and that makes insulin is, go ahead, think about it. Pancreas. Okay. Technically, pancreatic island. Which endocrine gland tells other endocrine glands how much hormone to make? Now, is that a little bit tricky? A little bit, okay? Because I said endocrine gland and the hypothalamus is not an endocrine gland. It's neural tissue, it's part of the brain, okay? So which endocrine gland tells the others what to make? The anterior pituitary, okay? Which part of the nervous system controls how much hormone is made by most endocrine glands? Part of the nervous system could be pituitary, but I don't have anterior pituitary here, so that's going to be the hypothalamus. Right? Oh, which endocrine organ is like the reclusive, rich guy's trusted advisor? I am torturing that analogy, right? Or which endocrine organ is like corporate offices? Oh, sorry, like the manager. And the manager was the anterior pituitary. Right. All right, we will start here at the beginning of the next video. Oh, oh, wait, before I sign off, make sure that you know these stories that we went over, not just, not just for, not just for thyroid hormone, but also for cortisol, because the question could be, a patient's cortisol levels are too high and their CRH levels are too low and their ACTH levels are too high, right? Make sure you know both sets of stories.